2017, Lindsay Partridge and Rob Listro started planning the largest and most ambitious project in the history of Brickworks. All my life, everything I do, I want to try and do the best I can. I never want somebody to look back and say, you know, that wasn't good enough. Why did you do it that way? So, you know, it's, it's, it's not about me and it's not about this year. It's about, you know, this plant's going to run for 40 or 50 years and people are going to say, why did they do that? Over the coming months, the Brickworks team will be building the most technically advanced brick factory in the world. And we will be watching. The level of technology here, there's no question that this will be the most advanced um, brickworks in the world and the largest single line um, in the world once it's completed. But we've certainly got the challenges ahead of us. It's an extruder that's never ran before. What's it going to do? Is it going to work first time? Is it going to spin? Is it going to get too hot? Will the column go crooked? Will we have enough oil? Will, the, will, our, will our clay get really hot in the interim? They're the unknowns. Finally been able to have the chance to get the side and bloody hell I tell you, the dramas, the dramas just continue here at the moment. One of the issues we've now got is we've got so much uncontrolled fill, we've done so much soil testing but we've had to make a real tough decision at the moment and pretty much as you can see behind me on the further ground which is our extrusion and the hacking area at the back, we've just got to be able to make the decision now to rip up all the concrete there's not one area that's been stabilised well enough, so we'll remove it, we'll put some uh, control grade fill back in, level it, and then we'll be able to uh, resurface it again. Wasn't wasn't part of the plan, but you can't take the risk when you're building a, a, a plant this size um, from that point of view. So, blessing that we've been able to travel. Uh, the negative is that uh, the dramas just continue. Is there anything that's worrying you at this point, or do you feel it's all under control? Oh look, you always worry that they're going to take longer in this particular one. We're really under pressure to, to get off, uh, to shut down plant three about August next year. So we have to catch up the time, so we're pushing our major contractors to go to around the clock seven days a week to try and catch the time up. Um, because we want to be able to get this plant up and away and we also then want to do some maintenance. We want to take our plant one offline to do maintenance on that plant because we're, at the moment we're very fortunate we've got a footprint of three plants. When we get off the plant three site, we'll only have two plants and they'll both be running. So there's no spare plant to, to shuffle things around while you do maintenance. So that's put, the, the timeline is where the pressure is. Um, the project I've seen, most of the machinery has been built. It's all been, you know, been gradually being put together in warehouses and workshops all over Victoria. That's not where I mean, most of the kiln supplies are actually on site. We you know we seem to beat the, the delays in shipping. Uh, that's all going okay. I'd be very confident that our regular designs uh, of our equipment will, will pretty quickly go up. There's one new piece of gear, of course, which is the Steel 120, which we want to hopefully run um, uh, beforehand and, and just keep this to yourself. But um, the foundations are designed to take a 90 in case we have to swap it out. <laughs> So, <laughs> just as a fallback place, because we haven't got the time to muck around if it doesn't go and we need to make some parts, but you know, <laughs> so, so there's always going to be a fallback position here. <laughs>